Okay, welcome to the next part of our Ultimate Turbo Miata guide and this time we are going to talk about fueling which as you can see by my row of stock injectors here um, I don't use them why is that because stock injectors on mx5s are kind of weak sauce because they are only good for around if you stretch it on vvt injectors they are 265 cc you could maybe reach 160 wheel horsepower which isn't that much so we are mostly not gonna worry about this i just gonna say i'm just gonna say two things about these you could obviously either do the getaway and uh, decap these ejectors, though I, I have not tried to do this yet. Um, maybe I will sometime in the future, but the problem is that you would need a flow bench to match them because when you decap them, they get kind of, yeah, all over the place as for flow rates. So it's not a thing that I would recommend and uh, yeah, you would need to spend some kind of money anyway. The next thing would be using a rising rate fuel pressure regulator. Yes, that is possible, but that's also only up to a point possible because a rising rate fuel pressure regulator, what it does, it rises the fuel pressure um, with the boost together, but at a rate that is times three times six or times nine for example depending on how, how the uh, regulator is set up it will raise the fuel pressure for example if boost raises five psi or if boost is five psi it will raise the fuel pressure by 15 psi if it's uh, by three rising rate or as i said if the boost uh, if it's a by five rising rate, for example, at a five PSI boost pressure, it should be able to raise the fuel pressure 25 PSI. The problem with that is you would end up at a very, very high fuel pressure then. And the problem of that is the lines and the fuel pump are kind of getting overwhelmed then, especially the stock fuel pump, because that bad boy here is going to be limited at above uh, four four and a half bar which would be 60 psi 70 psi that thing drops off in flow quite heavily so i would suggest if you go that route even then uh, splurging for a bigger fuel pump like a Volvo 255 or like this an am 340 which are around 100 bucks so it's not that expensive but if you're gonna go that route why not just spend the extra 150 for some injectors as well with that you would be able to go to around 200 horsepower maybe if you go like to four and a half bar or something like that you would be able to get get a flow of around 400 cc's out of them um, which as i said would be able to handle around 400 horsepower maybe but that's already kind of uh, getting to the limits of this option because as well as the fuel pump you'd have to upgrade the fuel pressure regulator also is kind of expensive uh, they seem to be somewhere in between 80 to 150 bucks so in that case you may be better off going for fuel injectors in general speaking of better fuel injectors or bigger fuel injectors most people go for the rx8 yellow injectors these are 425 cc and they can be had for somewhere around 150 bucks in most cases and they can flow up to 240 horsepower but that's also getting to the limit and as i said also on any mx5 the fuel pump is uh, well it's not really a service item but mazda recommends uh, changing them every hundred thousand miles or I would suggest even sooner because they are getting quite old now and going for a new one that will help with that. Obviously changing filters etc is a thing that you should look out for as well. But the 425 yellows they are kind of well not a thing I'm, I really like anymore because there are better alternatives. For example there are Subaru 565 injectors, which are basically the same price. They are also plug and play. You can also just plug them in. They're the same shape as these ones, have the same Denso plug. 
and they are also only 150 bucks and with those you are safe or very safe and have some headroom at 250 horsepower but you can go up to around 300 which would be um, the limit of the stock motor so that's basically the perfect fuel injector for any turbo build with a stock engine whereas the 425s are really at a limit of, at 240-250 horsepower the other options would be going for either relatively expensive ones which would be injected dynamics for example or fuel laps or whatever and those are like 300 bucks expensive they are plug and play obviously but they are very expensive and this is why i don't really like them of course if you like to spend the money or if you can't spend the money maybe go for them especially if you want to run run e85 because you're gonna need a really big injectors for that uh, because you are under load with high power you may have to use up to 50 percent more fuel um, so that might be a better option for you but my favorite injectors for use with relatively high power builds but still keeping it in a budget are stock bosch injectors which can be had for around 200 bucks and they are offered in up to 980 cc so up to 600 horsepower there should be anything should be possible in those the only thing you need for those are you need some adapters so harness adapters from the denso plugs to the bosch plugs and you need some top hats these top hats are adapters from the larger bosch diameter to the smaller mazda fuel rail size so they are a bit smaller than this you won't be able to fit them directly into the fuel rail so what you would be looking at around five to six bucks for a set of those just go for the ebay ones the china ones they are perfectly fine you don't need any fancy expensive ones that are billet and machined or whatever just use the cheap ones and then you use the cables you can also obviously use just some pigtails and wire them into your harness I like adapters more because you don't have to cut up your harness, that, which makes it a bit uh, easier to install. Also if you're not uh, confident in wiring, that makes it a bit better. And as I've mentioned before, I have some fuel pump options here, which I, as I said, would recommend uh, anyway when going for a turbo build because they are not as expensive as you might, as you might think. And it's good insurance to have because if your fuel pump is well slowly dying you may have some scenarios where your car is running lean and you may not even notice it when you have not set anything uh, any securities up for that so throwing one of these in there this is an am340 which are as i said 100 bucks um, and compared to this one should be able to handle about three times the flow at minimum so 600 horsepower and more shouldn't be a problem on those. Whereas these, even if they are new, above 250, 270, they kind of, yeah, aren't the greatest. So I would suggest that. The only problem with those are they are kind of loud because the MX-5 does not have much sound deadening on top of the fuel pump assembly. So it can be a bit louder, but I think an MX-5 isn't the quietest car in general. So yeah you may have to just live with that just a few more things i want to tell you um, if you are, want to go for the route of uh, some stock bosch injectors and uh, maybe find some siemens deca ones um, i actually wouldn't suggest using the siemens ones because i have had some bad experiences with them um, because they can be kind of all over the place as flow goes and they seem to be um, as far as build quality goes somewhat worse and uh, leaky so yeah i would stay away from those and just use genuine uh, bosch ones which aren't that much more expensive also if you're doing fuel injectors please for the love of god just use new fuel lines because they are in a hot engine bay and they will be uh, some kind of deteriorated after 25 30 years if they have never been changed before so just do that it's just a fuel leak waiting to happen especially on a boosted car where the fuel pressure is higher than normal so 
just spend a few bucks and uh, renew those as well. Um, the stock fuel rail on an MX-5 is capable of handling about 500 to 550 horsepower without any issues. Um, I would only recommend upgrading if you are going to run a 85 or even more power than that. Otherwise, it is fine. And that's basically it for fueling. Obviously, maintenance is a thing that you have to look out for. Your fuel filter should be new and also the lines going to it and from it should also be replaced if you are doing it. And uh, yeah, that's probably the basic stuff you already know if you are doing something like this. But now you also know which injectors to choose or which you maybe should not choose. Anyway, this is all for this part. If you have any further questions, as always, drop them down in the comments. And uh, yeah, I wish you a nice day and goodbye. Thank you.